guys hope you're doing well so I thought I would start doing these uh, new little sessions called midweek, midweek sessions because uh, recently I started a new group up on my Dirty Secrets page that was kind of just going through and answering some of the questions that I usually get so I usually get quite a few questions through on my Facebook page and on Twitter and all different places like that so I set up a uh, group within my page, if I can get to my page at the moment. So there's a Dirty Secrets Ask Me Anything page where a lot of people have been asking me questions about you know, how I produce, different tracks that I've done, uh, different techniques that I've got. So I thought what I'd do is i kind of do this um, video, this kind of live stream every week, just to answer whatever questions in there. Because sometimes I'll try and type it out and you know it's, it's not always easy to kind of get the whole some of the com complex things that I do and uh, just get it into a message basically into a comment so I thought I'd make these kind of videos these weekly sessions where I kind of go over all the different techniques that I've got that I use on a regular basis in my tracks and in my sets um, and also kind of keep you updated with what's going on with me and kind of you know what's been going on in my land so um, one of the main things I suppose that's really been going on is the uh, new uh, Pioneer video that went out this week last week this week last week uh, yes so on uh, Pioneer DJ I had a new video going over the uh, DJS 1000 so their new DJS 1000 sampler uh, I did a five minutes performance um, basically just kind of showing how how the kit can be used how the samplers used um, and I basically created uh, three of my tracks live so beats bumping uh, freaking weekend and then my remix of Aslay is gonna get you back so uh, that is up on the pioneer page now uh, it's also up on my Facebook page um, there's also the walkthrough as well so you can see the walkthrough uh, that kind of shows you how I kind of did some of the techniques in that video um, but what, what are we doing a we're we doing a proper Q&A on the DJS I think in uh, the, the weeks to come because obviously I want to kind of I'm, I'm a real kind of uh, evangelist for the DJS 1000 I think it's a brilliant bit of kit I think you know it's got um, it opens up massive uh, loads of possibilities for DJing and you know me I'm always kind of putting edits and bootlegs into sets and this kind of DJS kind of just helps me do all that kind of live so yeah so then I I'd say uh, check out the Pioneer DJ video that I've done if you haven't already. If you're on my page, you probably have already anyway. Uh, but yeah, so there will be a QA and a especially for that coming up soon. Um, I've also got a new track coming out on Many Six label, uh, Overdose. So a track called On My Mind. Um, that is coming out on Saturday, I think. So uh, I think in the weeks to come, I might tear that down and show you how I made all that. Um, so yeah, there's that as well. Uh, I've been doing a lot of um, I've been doing a lot of workshops with uh, Lisa Lashes. So Lisa Lashes has started up her own uh, DJ academy, and uh, she is um, teaching 14 to 18 year olds how to DJ. And I've been going along there, and I've been kind of showing them the DJS and and how I kind of do my kind of uh, improvised kind of stuff in my sets, which has been really nice to see. It's been nice to kind of see. Um, it's been nice to see people really engage well the kids really engage like proper switched on about it you know ones that have gone in there thinking oh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna play on cdjs i'm gonna become a dj and you know i'm, I'm gonna mix a couple of tracks and then they've seen the djs and they've started using that and then they've seen ableton and they've thought they want to get into producing as well it's amazing to kind of see the enthusiasm that comes from that so so yeah so uh that has been brilliant kind of doing those workshops and uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I've been up to. A lot of pioneer stuff, uh, some uh, some teaching, some judging. I was yeah, I was over at a university the other day, uh, judging some uh, music technology projects, some concepts um, of for music uh, production and performance, and it's they're just crazy. They're amazing. Um, I wish I could say more about them, but obviously they're. I've got to be very tight-lipped about these students and their their upcoming projects. So uh, yeah, that was that was amazing. So yeah, and then finally coming to this, obviously this live stream, this is kind of, um, I've been thinking about this for a while, I've been doing a couple of videos, as you know I kind of do the uh, Studio Secret set videos every now and again while I kind of 
going into making a bootleg or show you how I do a certain technique in Ableton or whatever. And to, to be honest, I've done a whole load of those videos. Like, there's a whole load of videos that are waiting to come out, but I've just not got around to editing them and putting them all together. So uh, what I thought I'd do is I'd just put the live camera on and just, just talk and just kind of take you through um, kind of all the stuff that's up going on with me at the moment and and then kind of yeah showing you how I you know any questions you've got for me anyway I'm gonna try and answer them in these kind of midweek sessions so I'm gonna head into the groups on my page so if you go onto my dirty secrets page you'll find the ask me anything group just ask to join it you better join it and we've already had you know a whole load of different questions that have come in through here um, you know some of them have been have been really interesting kind of seeing you know them come through so I thought what I'd do is kind of just run through this and just have a look at these questions and maybe expand on some of the stuff uh, and show it live as well um, so I think one of the first ones was Massimo Barilli I, I can't pronounce that last name, but Massimo, uh, he asked uh, if, if I've got any special tri tips and tricks to do laggy snares and claps and stuff like that. So um, that's basically kind of, it's kind of creating those kind of slightly offbeat drum hits that give it a bit of a skip, a bit of a... A bit of humanism to it and uh, yeah there's, there's there's a whole load of things you can do let me get some uh, let me get some stuff in here so let's get uh, let's get a kick loop in here first can we hear that you can hear that all right in the group so it's a nice little kick loop there we're gonna loop that up um, yeah so snare um, to how to do kind of offbeat kind of claps there's several different ways of doing it um, our first one is obviously is just dropping the actual uh, snares on there. So let me get, uh, sorry, claps on there. So let's get the claps. Let's pick a, a 909 clap. So we could easily just drop the clap on there and have it straight on the uh, every other kick. So that's kind of classic kind of house stuff, isn't it, really? There we go. Let's loop this up. So we can easily just do that. That's just kind of very, you know, that's on the beat and that kind of works most of the time. So how do you kind of get it off of the beat? So several different things. What we could do is we could we could take both of these and just gradually nudge them. So you can actually just click and drag on it. But if you hold down the uh, command key on, on Apple, I'm not quite sure what it is on the PC, uh, but if you hold that down, then you can just drag it off the grid. I hope you can see that. If you just drag it off the grid, then you can actually just put it slightly slightly before or after the kick so that's kind of a very kind of rough and ready way of doing it so you can already hear that's off the beat there uh, another way that I like to do as well is uh, down the bottom right hand corner here we have this this track delay so you have to turn this on it's not usually on uh, but the track delay really helps and what it does is it kind of allows you to add milliseconds or uh, take away milliseconds to kind of make something quicker or slower so if you do minus no, no, about minus 30 milliseconds, for example, that will then kind of move the clap upwards in time. So it, it'll actually hit before it's showing on here. So as you can hear, they're not quite hitting together. And the same thing goes if I do like plus 30, for example, it hits just after the kick. Now that's a bit too much. Maybe we can just reduce it down. So it's a really easy way of doing that. So you can obviously have the clap still on the grid and be happy with where they are, but then you can use a track delay to the right just to kind of offset it a little bit. You can do very much similar things uh, with uh, MIDI clips as well, uh, but generally I kind of use the track delay a lot. That's one of my favorite ways of kind of delaying it because as I say, you can keep it on the grid, but still kind of delay it if you want to. So uh, that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of probably my, my main way of doing it. I know I kind of showed a few other ways of doing it, but that's probably, that's pretty much how I do uh, most of the stuff. When I kind of want to move it off the grid, I'll either kind of do it manually by, uh, by mouse just off the grid, or I'll use that track delay. So that's kind of, that's basically how I do most of my kind of delayed stuff. 
Uh, so next up, um, Carl's asked, do I have a set template for when I create an arrangement? So no, when I kind of create a brand new arrangement, if I go to new here, it literally opens up with a brand new set. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Oh, no, don't save. Yeah, so basically it comes up with a blank, I've got a blank template. So pretty much the same blank template you get with uh, with Ableton anyway. Um, I don't think I've tweaked anything on here. Even the send and return channels are exactly the same as the default. The only thing that I do kind of, um, I do have is I have a default set for certain instruments or effects that I use. So say for example, if I drop an EQ8 on a channel, uh, then I've automatically got a low cut on it. So you, as you can see on here, we've got a low cut already on here. And you can easily do that. You can easily uh, just right click on any instrument or any effect and just click save as default preset. Hopefully you can see that in the video. But yeah, if you right click on any kind of plugin or um, instruments, then you can save it as the default preset. So for me, when I'm kind of dropping an EQ8 in, usually 90% of the time I'm kind of cutting out the bottom end. So that's kind of, that really helps me. Um, but that's the kind of the only thing that I do have really kind of preset. Um, what I tend to do is I will go through my previous projects. So if you go to uh, your all your Ableton projects where they're, the way they're housed, I can easily go into uh, one of the tracks, for example, let's go into uh, Beats Bumping, and for example, I can open up the project and just pull out the bass instrument. So I can easily just pull out, and that'll pull out the whole channel. So that's pulling out the whole strip. So that'll be the instrument, all the effects I've used, and everything else like that. So whereas I could set it up as a template in the start, I might not want the same instruments every time. However, I might want to kind of pull you know, this one in from this track and this one in from that track. And as I say, that's kind of the easy, that's, I, I like doing it that way. So I like kind of just going into old projects, pulling out just individual channels and then using them that way. So that's kind of how I do that. Um, so yeah, so no real template going from there. I literally go from a blank template. Uh, so uh, what else have we got? Uh, Victor has asked, um, Sometimes I feel like shorter sounds are not snappy enough to fit in the groove of the mix. Are there any tracks, are there any tricks for this? So, um, yeah, I, short, it, it really depends on what kind of genre of music you are producing for. So if you're producing for more kind of techno, uh, you know, certain elements of tech house, you're probably going to have very, very... Um, very sharp kind of sounding drums. If you're doing the kind of more US house kind of stuff like I am, or you know hip hop or whatever else like that, then you might have more sloppy kind of drums, more kind of stuff that, that fills up the space. So there's no kind of, there's no kind of uh, right or wrong answer on on shorter sounds. Um, yes, if you do work with shorter sounds, then you've got to be more precise with you know where you're placing things because there's obviously a lot more kind of empty space around. There's you know each each. Uh, Kind of instrument each different sound is going to have a lot more kind of emphasis so you're going to hear it probably a lot more um so so yeah i, I would say it, it's all personal taste i can't really kind of judge on that one um but you'll just know at the end of the day you'll just if if you just keep going through and replacing something that's not working and see if it works something else works that's that's the only way i kind of ever know whether something's not working is just kind of replacing it with something else seeing if it's better, if it's not, going back to the original. So that's kind of usually how I deal with that. Uh, next up, oh, we got my video of the SP-16. So yeah, that's, an, that's an old tutorial. Um, again, uh, Carl's come back and he's asking another question about getting vocals to uh, sit in the mix better. So uh, vocals in the mix. So I don't really kind of deal with that many full-on vocals. Generally, um, I use cut up vocals or vocal stabs I don't generally work with full on vocals um, so I can't really give you a, a definitive answer of like this is how you do it but I can show you how I do it anyway um, so how are we going to do this let's get um, actually let me load up a previous project that's probably going to be the easiest way of doing it so let's try and find let's find as they going to get you back because that's got a nice full vocal in it. Let's just hope that 
it is all set up all right. And what do we what don't we have working here? So I think oh no, let me turn that off. I've got the uh, analog heat running here, and I think I might have used it with slightly different settings. So it's uh, I'm just having to disable that. So that's kind of as full of vocal as I get. Uh, so we can get, we can have a look in here if I just kind of zoom in a bit. So we've got the main vocal in here and I can solo it out for you. So I've got kind of a lot of stuff going here and what I'll do is I'll just disable it all so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Actually, I don't know why that. So that's the vocal as it was dry. As with most things that I do, first thing I do is take out the bottom end, kind of get rid of the bottom end that I don't need. And also with it, because it's a vocal and I kind of want to give it a bit of style, I'll, I'll cut a bit more of the bottom end than perhaps I would normally do with anything else. So that's kind of cut out the bottom end. That's kind of, uh, yeah, just made it a bit more cleaner to work with maybe. Uh, next up, uh, Ableton Reverb. Uh, so I've got quite a high, let me hide this for a second. Uh, I've got quite a high uh, mix on this. So it's a, again, the reverb is actually on the channel rather than the send. I know some people do it as sends and that's probably the best way to do it. I always do it on the channel. If you've seen any of my tutorials, if you've seen any of my courses on Sonic Academy, I always seem to put the reverbs on the actual channels themselves. Just something I've always done. Um, there's no, again, no right and wrong way to do it. Probably a wrong way that I'm doing it. But um, yeah, so I always put it on the channel. And I've got it at 39% there. So effectively, we've got 39% of the dry signal and the rest of it is wet. Um, so that kind of gives it, puts it in a bit of space. I'm a gone, I'm a gone, I'm a gone, get you back. Uh, I'm a, I'm a gone, I'm a gone, I'm a... So we got that. Uh, I did have a ping pong delay in here, but um, it's actually on 0%. So I'm guessing I haven't put any ping pong delay in. The ping pong delay does work very well on vocals though. Um, the If you just drop it on a track, the default actually works very well for vocals. Uh, dial it in at about 10%. And basically what it does, the ping pong delay obviously goes from left to right. When you, when you kind of hear, you put the, the, the delay on the track, you'll hear uh, the whatever it's affecting go left to right as it kind of delays um, it works very well for vocals because it almost kind of doubles them up so you've got the main kind of vocal going down the middle and then you have this kind of ping pong delay of the vocal kind of uh, going from left to right in the background so that's kind of it's almost kind of coming up with some kind of chorus like you're almost doubling the vocals um, but it's just a, a, a kind of it's it's a fake effect a way of doing that it's just kind of it's just filling the space a bit more so you kind of it's kind of making it feel um fuller wider kind of stuff um so yeah that's how i usually do vocal i a ping pong i put ping pong pong delay straight on there uh i'm not sure why i don't have it on this time yeah it's not even on the group either so uh yeah i, I just didn't have that on this time and then my kind of real trick of the trade and how I get uh, most of my vocals into stuff is using a sidechain effect. Um, now obviously you can use sidechain, you can use compression to do that and you can use the Ableton um, default compressor, it works very well. Um, but again, if you again if you watched any of my videos, you know that I always use LFO tool. Um, LFO tool, for anybody who doesn't know, is just a way of ducking things. So it does the side chain effect, um, but basically just uh, ducks the sound of whatever you put it on. So you'll see on the screen that uh, we've got this kind of uh, this envelope here that kind of shows where the sound is being ducked. So uh, this is the volume level, and it goes up to up to the it's full here. But at the start of the bar, well at the start of the beat, it's actually down. So what it's doing is it's kind of it's uh, ducking the kick. So you'll see this kind of uh, this kind of effect going. And it's just kind of ducking the vocal when the kick would hit. So if I uh, solo the kick as well. And 
that's kind of that's kind of my secret sauce way of doing it basically um the side chain it almost kind of merges it all in because it's kind of it, it, it pumps with the actual track uh, now again it might not work depending on the kind of genre that you kind of work with and again it might not work with a full-on kind of radio kind of edit kind of vocal if you're doing a full vocal track it's it might not work as well um but certainly for my kind of stuff where I, it more kind of club mixes i want the vocal to be more in with the track so they're sitting about right sitting about the same so um yeah i say the side chaining always works for me um, and that's generally kind of my the last thing that's kind of on the vocal, so it all ducks it. So even like, so you're you've got the reverb in there. You might have a little bit of delay, but everything is then being affected by this side chain. So it's kind of, it's filling it out, and then it's kind of merging it in with the track. Um, yeah, as I say, it's just one of those techniques that I've just learned over the years, and uh, it just works for me. So that's that question. Uh, what else have we got in here? We've got Massimo come back again. Um, how do you create more movement on the t on your hi hats at certain points in the track? How do you create more mo movement? Um, there's a ton of things you can do with uh, movement on the uh, track. Um, I tend to, as I put it within here, I use the auto pan. The auto pan's brilliant. Um, you could also use the Max LFO plugin. So. Let me start you off with a brand new project. See, I haven't really kind of uh, prepared any of this, so this is kind of all very on the fly. I thought it'd be kind of a bit more interesting having it kind of all on the fly, and then you can see I'm just kind of, yeah, unprepared and warts and all. So let's get, let's get a drum loop in here. Damn, that's a heavy kick. And let's get some hi-hats in here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get a, let's put a hi-hat sound in here. So let's go into a drum machine. Let's get... So let's get this hi-hat in there for now. Drag that onto the track. And we'll just create a quick MIDI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, some 16th notes with this hi-hat. And then I'll show you kind of a few techniques that we can do to um, basically just kind of create some movements with these hats. So there we go. We've got that very inspiring hat, pat, hat uh, loop there. I think it just might be coming through in mono your side, so apologies for that. I'm not quite sure what's going on, on this side. But hopefully you get the idea anyway. So so we got this kind of this kind of hat going on here. Uh, what I can do now is I can put uh, an auto pan on here. So auto pan is one of my favourite things. Um, I love using this uh, effect in tracks um, because it almost kind of it, it, it gives more movement without you having to do a whole load of automation. Um, so generally, what I do is I'll turn it I'll turn the uh, quantize on so it's on to the uh, rate of the bar, and we want it on sixteenth, so that works right. And then I'm just going to up the amount. And what this basically does is it throws it from left to right. Whatever signal is coming into it, it kind of just does that with it. Um, so at the moment, it's on a kind of very, um, it's on a very curvy shape. So it will gently go from left to right. jumping from speaker to speaker and if you can't quite hear the um, if you can't quite hear it in on the video you'll see it on these kind of meters that we're going from left to right here so it's kind of a very nice kind of little movement here so we can do that and that's one thing that we can do um, another thing that I was going to show you that's uh, a bit more of an advanced technique and you do have to have uh, Ableton Studio for this is using the Max for Life instruments. So one of the fun things that I find most fun playing around with is uh, using the MIDI effects. So let's get a uh, velocity one in here for example. 
and then let's get in the max for life let's go for the LFO so this is I, I, I spent a lot of time kind of playing around with these kind of things so we have uh, an L the LFO kind of the LFO MIDI max effect basically allows you to put an LFO on anything now if you don't know what an LFO is um, maybe you need to go off and read about it but generally what it is is something that will um, automate something over time so it's kind of it's using this sine wave to kind of do um, to automate something but what it automates is totally up to you so what I can do within here is I can uh, then automate the velocity of this so in fact I don't even need the velocity plug and we can automate the volume control of this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click map on here, map it to the volume of the um, of the simpler, and as you can see, it's going absolutely crazy now. It's just going up and down, up and down. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the depth down a bit. And we'll take the rate down a little bit as well. offset down a bit as well So as you can see there, just playing around with some of the LFO, and basically what I'm doing is I'm mapping the LFO to the volume and it's slowly doing the volume up and down now I can choose uh, this to be a random wave as well so this will do random stuff so we can see the random volume going up and down here just randomly changing uh, now if I change this to a faster rate and take the depth down a little bit let's try playing So as you can see there, the kind of LFO is now kind of controlling the uh, volume of the hi hat as it's going along. It's doing it's doing random volume jumps. So you're recreating kind of organic way of playing this hat. Um, so yeah, and you can play around with this for ages. Like I mean, I'm just playing around there again, just adjusting the offset, the rate, the depth. Um, it all has different effects on here, and what it's basically doing is it's just automating the volume of the simpler. Um, there's a ton of different things you can do, but that's just one of the ways that you can, can, you can bring randomness into your project and it will just allow you to kind of create uh, more organic kind of sounding drums because drums can sound obviously when you play drums when when you've got a drummer there they're playing and they're you know they're playing all the different drums and they won't be playing it at the same kind of volume each time the same kind of velocity they'll be hitting it slightly different slightly out of time and this is where you can kind of use things like the lfo midi to kind of control things randomly so you can kind of just put a bit of random nature into the volume or or whatever control you want to there's so much stuff that you can do with this um, recently I've been kind of using it to uh, randomly come up with chords and we come up with notes and stuff um, again it's just a case of just experimenting with it and seeing where you come what you know where it takes you uh, and generally that's why I spend a lot of time in the studio just kind of playing around I should be doing music but I end up going off on these weird tangents and finding all these strange little um, effects and stuff that you can do um, so yeah so again I, that's probably gone more into that than I, than I should have done but um, but yeah, I thought it'd be it's easier to for me to explain on video because it's very hard. Imagine trying to explain that in, in a message, you know. And even that, you know, um, I didn't go into it fully. Uh, I think it's just all about just experimenting and playing around with it. Uh, so what else have we got? Um, so Victor asked, where can you get um, like kind of old school sounding uh, vocal shouts? Um, so like kind of I guess the ones that you get from old school kind of house tracks um, my best advice for that kind of stuff is uh, you've got to think of where you know the, the people that were making house music around in the 90s that that kind of old school kind of house like where did they get their samples from you know a lot of them were sampled from old records old funk and soul records um, but some of them you know they would they would still be using sample CDs for example 
So what you got to do is kind of go through and um, you know see what kind of sample CDs were out in the 90s. Um, so I've got a whole load of uh, different sample CDs. Um, one of the most famous ones is this one, the um, Houseworks CD. Uh, this is what this is by Moose T, and I think I bought this. I think I bought this late 90s. Um, yes, I think I bought this in the late 90s, maybe early noughties. Um, again, this I think this was about 60 pounds. Um, again, you know, when you when you're used to buying sample packs online, and then you kind of look at these kind of sample CDs. It's, I mean, Splice for example, you can you can have Splice for 7.99 a month, and you can get I think it's what's it 150 samples you get a month or 100 samples you get a month. Um, with with CDs like this, you used to you know plunk down like 50, 60 quid to get a sample CD like this, and uh, it was all it's all, all audio. It's an audio CD, so you'd have to rip the CD and then cut up all the samples from it. Um, so yeah, they even made you work for it. You don't know how good you got it now. Um, so uh, and I've got like a whole other those are all compilations. So one of the, one of the ones I love going through uh, and. Again, you're probably going to think it's a bit crap, but EJ CDs. So uh, my kind of secret is kind of getting to a lot of these old CDs. So um, EJ, for those of you that have just started producing, um, was like this really, really simple, basic way to kind of produce music. Um, it was on the PC and uh, the interface was crap. And it was basically just dragging and dropping samples onto a grid and just arranging them like that. The samples were pretty terrible. Um, there wasn't much else. That there was literally just drop, dragging and dropping samples on there. There, was, there weren't any instruments. The effects were very primitive. Um, but again, you kind of got stuff done, and it kind of, you know, you you kind of experiment with it. It's generally meant for the younger audience and getting them into it. But um, but yeah. So anyway, EJ finished a while, you know, ages and ages ago. But you can still pick these CDs up. Um, and for example, the, this is the Sound Collection 3. Um, so this has got 7,000, 7,500 samples on it. And granted, most of them are probably quite terrible. Uh, but being as this kind of came out in the 90s, I'm just looking for, oh, so this is copyright 2000, copyright 2000. So, um, so this came out in the year 2000, probably, probably, probably being produced like from 98, 99. Um, so this kind of stuff would have all your kind of old school kind of samples on it. Um, and again, you're not sampling them from old records because these are royalty free still. So, so yeah, I mean, if you're looking for like kind of the old school kind of uh, shouts and the kind of stuff that was used on, um, you know, house music in the 90s, then, you know, go back to, you know, what the sample CDs they were using uh, back then, because that's, that's what they're going to be using. So, um, yeah, definitely hit up eBay. Amazon's a good one for that as well. Just go through Amazon. Um, I'm always on eBay just finding random sample CDs and stuff. Most of the time you'll buy them and they're probably no good, but every now and again you'll buy a sample CD and you'll find maybe one sample on it, and that will that will that that will just make a track. So, um, and you know, there's been a, there's been several tracks I've had out which have had very prominent uh, vocals from these CDs. So, um, if you haven't noticed it, then you know, uh, obviously these CDs can't be that bad. So, uh, so yeah, so that's that one. I think we're about up to date. Yeah, we're about up to date with all this. Um, I should probably actually check the uh, streams as they're going out. See if anybody's made any comments on them. So let's jump back to the uh, Dirty Secrets page. Um, yeah, I say, if you wanna, I'm gonna keep doing these uh, sessions, hopefully every week. I'm gonna try and do them midweek. So they'll be like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, something. I'm hoping you're gonna try and do them every Wednesday. Um, and then just go from there, really. Uh, let's have a look, see if we can get to this live video. 11 people watching. Oh, thanks for tuning in. Um, Right, let's open this up. Anybody else having trouble with um, Facebook Live in the browser? Safari's just crap for me th at the moment. Right, uh, let's, I'm gonna have a quick look through these comments. Let's see if, oh, no problem, Victor, on that. Um, yeah, I'm glad I'm able to help you. Uh, as I say, it's, uh, this is what I'm gonna try and do. So if you want these questions answered, um, 
any of your question answered, go on to the Ask Me Anything group. It's joined onto the Dirty Secrets group. So if you go to uh, Dirty Secrets page and then go uh, to the group that's linked to that, Ask Me Anything, just drop your question in there. And then what I'll do is I'll probably I'll probably answer it in a comment, but I might do it next week on the mid midweek session. Uh, Paul Brown, Music 2000 on the PS1. Yes, if anybody does remember Music 2000, uh, that was very much an EJ kind of copy. Bas basically, uh, yeah, it was just dragging and dropping samples, but it's what we learnt on. That's kind of it. You can't really judge these kind of things. The, you know, music technology isn't like it is now. Anybody can get hold of Ableton or they can get hold of Logic or anything else like that. And we've got these amazing packages that we can make you know brilliant music with you don't even need to buy anything really external to kind of make music with and back then we were kind of just using pre-prepared samples in a very well very primitive sequencer so um so yeah uh yeah music 2000 was awesome i don't know how we did it on the ps1 though like surely you need a keyboard and a mouse to do it on um Okay, so I've got a message from Hervé. Uh, when you start work on a track, do you always start with the drum kit first, bass, or the music? Um, it depends on every every track is different. Um, one of the things that's quite fun is that on my phone, I actually have a whole load of voice memos. Um, so quite often, I'm out and about. I'm not producing, you know, I'm not in the studio every day, um, so I might be out and about somewhere, you know, come back from a gig or might even be at a gig in the, on, in the car or something on the way home. You know, I'll suddenly come up with a melody idea or a vocal idea of some sort. So um, even though I don't kind of vocal it, a lot of the tracks myself, um, I will kind of record vocals into my, into my phone or I might hum a melody or something into my phone. And then basically what I do is I'll, I'll start from there. So that might be my starting point. Um, other times, you know, I might come up with, uh, I might just um, just play around with some samples and see what comes. So uh, one of the things that I love doing most and what I always tell people um, is the, uh, the audio to MIDI. Now, the audio to MIDI in Ableton is just a fantastic way to get started. There's a lots of other, uh, other really good plugins in the, out there that kind of do that kind of thing. Um, but uh, yeah, basically just being able to take any kind of um, any kind of synth loop or any kind of guitar loop or any kind of melodic loop at all, uh, chucking it into onto a MIDI track can kind of give you some really interesting stuff. So uh, for example, let's jump into maybe uh, the Frankie Rosado defected pack. Let's have a look at what we got in here. So for example, that I quite that's quite a cool little loop there. But what I'm going to do is I am going to pull in another uh, instrument. Let's pull in something. What have we got in here? Um, what do I use a lot at the moment? Actually, yeah, let's let's, call, let's pull in the old Korg M1. Let's see what we can do with that. So uh, I'm going to pull up uh, the old original organ patch, the M1 house split. Bloody love this one. Um, and let's drag and drop. Oh, now all I need to do, now I've got that MIDI, uh, the M1 on that channel, all I need to do is, do is uh, drag and drop this sample onto there. And you'll see it's got the, uh, the little kind of the cursor changes and it allows me to then convert the audio into MIDI. Now, because this hasn't got any chords in it, I don't have to worry about harmony. It's not drums, so I'm just gonna pick melody. And what it will do is it will now read that and then, it will, then it's obviously uh, giving me some notes there. So this might not sound like that original sample, but it might give me a starting point. It's playing a bit high, so let's uh, see how it, let's move it down a couple of octaves. So we've got the original sample. So there you go, that's kind of, that, that might be how I start a track. So I've kind of come up with this, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've taken this original sample, I've replayed it in here. Again, I, I, I wouldn't nest, I wouldn't leave it like this. I would go in there and I would clean it up and I might even, I might even change the notes or whatever. I might even play around with it, put in a different key perhaps, 
you know, uh, again, it's just kind of one of those one of those ways of just getting started quickly. You know, if you if you're sitting there and you've got an idea, maybe you might have a vocal sample you found, or uh, you might just have a melody that you're playing via keyboard. If you're sitting there and you can't think of anything, then this is a really good way to kind of get started. And some days, you know, you sit down in the studio, you know, you've planned, you think you've you've thought right, okay, all week I've got the studio on Friday. You know, I'm doing other stuff all week, but my day, you know, my studio day is on Friday. Um, it gets to Friday and you're like, I can't think of anything to do. I've got no ideas. Um, and that happens quite a lot. So, um, so yeah, so that's how I kind of start on those days where I'm, you know, I'm not feeling that creative or just my brain's mush. You know, I can't think of anything. This is a good way to kind of start that off. Um, and there's loads of different ways you can go from here. I mean, sometimes like if you take that and then maybe put a chord effect on it, maybe. See, I could even just start playing around here. So the chord effect is one of my favourite things. If I put a minor ninth on that, maybe. And then maybe let's put a bit of an EQ8 on it, maybe. And then a bit of LFO tool on there, just to sidechain it a bit. I mean, I could just start playing around with it there, and that's how easy it is just to kind of get in a groove, kind of just, uh, yeah, um, and that's kind of how you can kick, a, kick an idea off, and that's kind of how I would uh, how I would do it on those days where I'm just not feeling that creative. So yeah, so that's kind of how I how I might just start an idea. So yeah, so that's uh, that's that question. Hopefully, Hervé, does that hopefully answer it? Hopefully. Um, uh, what else have we got in here, uh, Victor? When it comes to sampling and it's not royalty free, at what point should be you should be, you be afraid to get into trouble? Um, so uh, yeah, I always I, I stick to be honest. Um, it, I suppose it depends. I, I tell you what, these days there's kind of less of a worry about that kind of thing, isn't there? Really, I mean, when you listen to the Beatport chart and the Track Source chart. Um, you hear a lot of vocals in there, a lot of old samples, and you know a lot of them definitely haven't been cleared. So you've got to wonder. I think it's it's getting into the kind of the wild west. I mean, back in the back in the late nineties, early noughties, we were kind of we were releasing stuff with uh, kind of samples in there and getting away with it. Um, but as time went on, obviously record labels caught up with that, and you'd get a slap on the wrist, and you know and your trap might get taken down or you just lose all royalties from it completely so um now it seems to be that record labels have kind of wised up and they're not following it as much it might be because there's just so much there's just so much music out there that the record labels really can't chase these down so sometimes you can get away with not clearing a sample i wouldn't recommend it but you could get away with clear with uh, not clearing a sample and then just seeing how you go with it um because uh there are so many as there are so many tracks being released if if, if you're not creating enough waves if you're not selling enough copies then record labels generally aren't going to be bothered by you um if you're sending if you're going to sell a lot of copies if you get a play on radio one it hits the top of the beatport chart then yes They'll be knocking on your door and asking if you got permission, and then taking all your royalties, and you know, and probably, you know, giving you a slap on the wrist. Um, so yeah, if you can find a record label that's good at clearing that kind of stuff, then that's good. There's never been a, been a better time to be able to actually approach the original artists and just kind of, um, yeah, kind of asking their permission or the original label. Even the labels now have wised up to the fact that a lot of people do bootlegs. And, um, you know, it's it's good for them to kind of put out the old catalogue again, make a bit of money out of it. Um, so, yeah, it's a I think they're starting to come around to that. So you're not going to have so much of an issue. One little thing I will kind of say is, though, um, you probably will remember it a little while back. If you follow my music and you download my music, I had a track called Back and Forth Out on my record label, Everyday Hustlers. So that was obviously had a. Uh, 
uh, that kind of gravel pit, that kind of Wu-Tang Clan gravel, gravel pit kind of sample in it. So uh, that didn't actually have a sample, that was all rewritten by myself. So it had a violin in there, which, uh, oh no, it was a flute actually. It was a flute in there and I replayed that with MIDI. I put a whole load of effects on it so it sounded kind of old and, you know, and dingy and like I'd sampled it. And then the vocal actually on it, uh, the back, back and forth and forth, that vocal was actually myself. So I recorded that, I think, on my phone. I don't even think I did it through a microphone. I think I recorded it on my phone. I brought it into the studio, pitched it down, and I was going to get it like re-sung or re-vocaled at one point, but then I just it just it just kind of worked. You know, there was no real kind of need. It wasn't a sung vocal, so it wasn't like I needed to make sure that it was absolutely in pitch. Um, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, you can get away with like that and basically what I did was I credited the publishers to the ones that originally wrote the track. Um, so that's kind of how I got away with that. Um, I did have the original writers actually approach me, they actually emailed to say, um, you know, uh, you okay, you know, you, you sure you should be doing this? And I was like, yeah, I've, I've, you know, I've credited you on it. And they were like, yeah, they were cool with that. So. Um, yeah, just make sure whatever you're doing, you know, you're talking to the record. If, I mean, that was that was my record label, so I was dealing with that. But make sure you kind of make the record label that you've signed it to, make sure they're aware of the uncleared sample. And then it's in their ball court, you know. Make sure when you're signing that contract that you're not signing something that says that you're at fault for it. Because obviously if anything comes back to bite you, it'll bite you and not the label. So, um, yeah, if you've got... Um, yeah, if, if you if you can, then uh, definitely try and get the record label to clear it. There are a lot there are a lot of good record labels out there that are great at clearing things these days. So so yeah, don't um, don't worry about that. Um, my remix of MG's Body Swerve. Uh, MC. Now I, I tell you what that that one I I did a while ago. That was for my set actually. Uh, that was for my uh, DJ set. The yes, yeah, the Body Swerve. If you haven't heard it, I've probably played it in my podcast a few times. If you if you've seen my sets, I've done the remix. Uh, I think I'm going to try and put that together and uh, put that as a proper release. Uh, I'm going to try and talk to uh, the lovely guy that is Grant Nelson because he's the one behind that track and see see if I can kind of get their release on that. Hopefully, fingers crossed. I'll have a word and see what I can do. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, get out to get that. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. I can't. I'm trying to see some more comments, but I can't see anything at the moment. As I say, um, if you're uh, yeah, if you want to ask me any more questions, I'm going to be doing these regularly. So I'm going to try and do these uh, once a month. Uh, sorry, once a month, once a week. I'm going to try and be here like midweek because I'm usually about midweek, mid midway through the week. I'm kind of taking a break from studio stuff. Um, so I'm going to try and do this in the evenings, in the week, midweek. Um, so if you go along to my Dirty Secrets page. Uh, if you go to the groups tab, uh, you'll see a group in there called Dead Secrets. Ask me anything, and I do mean it. Like, um, if you want to ask me anything, you can do in here. I'll always answer it. I'll try and answer it as soon as I can. Um, I can already see that one person wants to join. Oh, I'm getting messages all over the place. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah. So, if you want to join this group, definitely join this group. You know, um, tell me kind of, uh, yeah. Uh, you know what kind of questions you want answering whether it's something to do with producing whether it's something to do with DJing um, I'll be doing a Q&A on the DJS 1000 very soon um, so if you want to know anything more about that certainly let me know on that um, I think that's about it for this week so uh, so yeah I'll be back again next week with the uh, midweek sessions midweek studio secrets thing uh, and uh, yeah just get your questions in on the group I'll uh, see you later